Today's podcast episode may have been recorded in the bathroom, but you didn't hear that from me. You're listening to The VO Life with Troy Holden. This is The VO Life, positive conversations about living the voiceover life. Inside into the business and day-to-day grind of being a regular Joe VO. From the humble beginnings to the finally hitting a new level to getting that first big client. It's all about that VO life. Here's your host, Troy Holden. Hey, 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 welcome back to the VO life. Good to have you. Episode 60. Can you believe it? Uh, This thing started back on January 5th in 2021. Um, 20 episodes of the VO ladder or voiceover ladder. Then we switch gears into the VO life. And here we are at episode 60. But let's be real, let's be honest, when we're talking about voiceover, how many topics can you literally talk about? You can hammer demos several times. You can hammer recording setup several times. There's a lot of things that we go over and over and over, it seems. Um, but this, this week, I, I'm kind of celebrating number 60, and I want to look back on uh, some not some of the things we've covered, but some of the things that have happened over the past couple of weeks. And the reason I want to do that is I've had my first, um, what do we call this? It's not really a stalker. It's a uh, troll, a troll that finds you on an internet platform or a social platform, and they decide to tell you how bad you are. And this person, when I read the first email, I was like, oh my gosh, I've really stepped on somebody's toes. I've hurt somebody's feelings. Have I said something out of line? What have I done? And those of you that have followed me know, and if you're on the VO Live Facebook page, you know, I, I'm not that type person. Uh, but some of the things they said were very quote unquote personal pointed, but they really weren't. It's anything that anyone could know if they went and looked at some of my posts, you would figure out really quickly that I make my own demos uh, because I can't yet go get a professional demo. I want one. I do, guys. I want one after I have learned what I've learned uh, in this past year and a half. But I'm not in a position to. Had I stayed as a full time worker in another job for another year, I probably would have come out of this year with a couple of professional demos, but I didn't have that opportunity. I knew it was time to make a change and I believed in what I was doing. So uh, that was one of the pointed things. My accent got hammered. The podcast got hammered. You don't book anything, which if I don't book anything, I don't know why I'm I'm busy most days of the week. Um, and, And granted, Uh, if there's anything I don't have, it's an ego. I really don't because I feel like I'm as far down the the totem pole as you can get in voiceover. I'm I'm nobody. I had the fortune to go to VO Atlanta a few weeks ago, and uh, because of people I had met through other people, I had some friendships there and got invited to some things, and, and they were even bashing me over the pictures I posted that I was a wannabe and all this stuff. And for about 30 minutes, I felt really bad. But then when I thought, uh, or then when I pursued it and started saying, well, who are they? Are they a voice artist? Who are they? Are they mad because I'm posting that I do things on my own or what? The email was absolutely fake, had to be fake. Um, There was no such person anywhere in any voiceover world uh, that I investigated, and I went down every rabbit hole I could. I finally found the name connected to another voiceover person who I'm pretty sure that was just coincidence on a Facebook post. Um, So the thing is, the next day, I found out that three or four other people had dealt with this same person and had the same type emails. And they had bashed on J. Michael Collins when they emailed me. Uh, The emails that the other people got, they bashed on uh, Todd Barnesness and Bill DeWeese. And oh my gosh, I mean, they were just like, they're lying about their bookings, they're lying about this. They just want you to pay to do that. And you know what? They're apparently not in the VO community because I have yet to find that person. Yes, there are quote unquote demo meals, but that's their business. It's what they do. And if you go pay for that, God bless you. Or as my mom would say, bless your heart. Uh, But I have yet to run into the first person who would not take a minute to talk to me. I have not. 
I have not run into anyone at any level that was not cordial and nice. And if they gave you advice or whatever based on listening to your stuff, you asked for it and you might get some stuff in there you didn't want to hear, but they were very nice and constructive about it, not belittling and hateful like this was. So wherever it came from and why it came, I don't know. And I wasn't the only one, but if you ever get these kinds of emails, just block them and shove it off and move on. There's nothing to it. Um, so here we are a few days later and I'm, you know, back in the saddle doing other stuff. The crazy thing is, two days after that, uh, well, the day after, I, I had the fortune to be on uh, or to record for the VO uh, Gurus podcast, and that should air April 27th week, probably. I don't know for sure. I haven't talked to Linda and JJ to know for sure. But the coincidence of having that happen the day before, then going on that podcast, it was a little bit of a, a aha thing for me, I guess, where I was like, well, maybe I'm not where I think I am. But you know what? I'm not going to doubt myself over this. I, I, I stuck a stake in the ground and said, all right, they did what they did. Put a stake in it. Let's move on. And so then uh, Thursday, uh, I did the podcast on Tuesday. I was really Billy. Uh, really Billy? No, I wasn't Billy. I was really busy on <laughs> the Wednesday. And then Thursday, I had a couple things to do early, but it just really uh, you know, I had several auditions, but it was I wasn't doing a lot of paid stuff. And instead of getting negative, I said, well, you know what? We need to go take the uh, truck to the shop and we need to run to the grocery and we got to go do this. Let's go do it because I've got an open window and my wife's home during the week. So she's like, okay. So we, you know, we go to Burger King and have a Whopper and had a good time. And we sat around the truck and watched the traffic go by. And we had dropped the, uh, my son's truck off at the shop to get tires and wheels put on. And, you know, his, it's the South folks. He's getting the big tires and wheels. And a lift kit. Yeah, that's what they do when they're 18. And so we got that done and we went by the feed store and got some feed and we went to the grocery store and we got home and put the groceries up. And uh, I had a couple things I had to come down and record. And I said, hey, now that I'm done, I'm going to I'm going to talk about this week because I like to do these when it's fresh on my mind. I do not hardly ever write notes or script anything for this podcast, as I'm sure you can tell. But um after all that goings on and then it slowed down a little, I thought, well, you know, again, that person is in my head and that's not fair. It's not fair to me. It's really not fair to them. They need to be living their best life and I need to be living my VO life. And, and no, I'm not a celebrity or a star or anything, but I did have a person messaging me today. I won't name names because she may not want to be named and asking me a question about an e-learning and they were wanting to pay by the hour and this, this, this. And I said, well, look, here's my advice and thank you for asking, but I'm not, you know, I don't know that I'm the person to ask. I had my confidence changed because cause what that person did to me. So I, I wanted to get that back and it really felt good to answer that question and get the positive response I got back from the person. It made my day. Um, and, and all your responses, those of you that responded on the VO Life page where I posted the name of the person and said, look, watch out for emails from them. And that's where we found out there were others. Um, so thank you for those responses. I appreciate that. I appreciate what you guys do for me as a person and keep me, you know, grinding and doing what I need to do because I could, I'm like you, I can give up too. Don't think that I'm just because I'm tied to this VO Life page and I, and I do the workshops and the things that I do to try to help. That doesn't mean that I don't struggle. Um, I struggle every day just like you do, hoping for more work and hoping for things to get better and hoping I can save up a little more money this month or next month because I really want to go coach with this person and I really want to go to this. And I'm already saying I need to put back this much, much, this must, I, I can't talk today, this much per month so I can go back to VO Atlanta next year because as much as it inspired me this year, I think next year I'll be more prepared to really drink it in and get even more out of it. And, and would I keep going every year? Absolutely. It's close and it's the right thing to do. So the, the main topic that came to me today when I sat down to do this was really not to talk about what happened this week, but I did want to get it off my chest one last time and move on. What I really wanted to talk about today is when things slow down, and I did post about that today. When things slow down, 
uh, we instantly start blaming ourselves and we start looking for why things slow down outside of the fact that it's out of our control. We think everything is in our control. I've got something wrong on a gig. I've got something wrong in my profile. Something's wrong in you know, on my website or my demo. It's in the wrong order. This, this is. I'm not saying that you can't improve things, but I'm saying before you go start changing a bunch of stuff around, I've done it in the past and I've had it backfire majorly on me at the end of last year, majorly to the point where my January and February, was it February also? Yeah, I think it was. December, January, February were probably three of the hardest months I ever had as far as business because I did it to myself, changing too many things too fast, too quick, too much. And I had to learn the hard way. So how do I say analytically change things? Because you don't know what might be wrong. Don't go out there and make a bunch of changes. If you want to change one keyword in your SEO or somewhere, change one. Don't change all five or all 10 or or whatever you have access to, depending on where you're changing things. Um, Don't completely change all your demos and the order they're in or whatever, you know, panic button you're hitting. Put your energy into marketing. Marketing, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to help myself in marketing? Sit down, get on Google, and start searching for people that you haven't reached yet. Now, guests on the VO Life are recorded using Zencaster.com, Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R.com. The best podcasting platform you can get. Zencaster. Thanks for being a sponsor. Now back to the VO Life with Troy Holden. Now, there are ways to do that versus pulling up the ones everybody else does. Oh, really? How do I do that? One of the ways you can do that is search, uh, and you're going to hear me flipping through some papers here because I want to tell you right. One of the ways you can do that is to search through different things versus... If you're on Google and in, in the first two or three pages, you're getting, oh, I'm getting those top 50 uh, VO agents or those top 50 production houses, or I'm searching the ones near me. There are other ways to search. One of those is called millionshort.com, millionshort.com. That eliminates all the top ones and gives you the ones that most people aren't getting to. Now, with all the places in the country that probably need VO, whether it's production houses, et cetera. Most people are searching for the top 50, top 100, top 25. They're not getting the ones in the bottom. You see what I'm saying? So they're probably not getting the barrage of emails and talent coming to them. There's a lot of boutique agencies out there that aren't going to show up. There's a lot of stuff that won't. So take a, take a look at millionshort.com. Uh, another thing you can also search on YouTube for filmmakers and ad agencies, not just on Google or million short or clutch.co. There's another place you can go clutch.co slash agencies. Um, there's other ways you can search. Um, yeah, you can go into LinkedIn and blah, 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 blah. But you know, it's slow. I got a couple hours. Maybe I I don't want to just go take a nap. Do this and build up your mailing list and then go into your calendar and say, all right, say this is like Thursday and say, all right, on Tuesday, I'm going to actually put this to use. I'm going to send out X number of emails. You don't have to get the contacts, send the emails today, but work on getting those contacts. Build your contact base. Make it bigger, 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 bigger. Keep building that contact base. B, what else can you do? You've heard me talk about it several times, local marketing, local marketing. Please do that. Uh, I joined my chamber of commerce. I booked a TV commercial for them. I did the audio, uh, the voiceover, the video, the full production of it, and it's airing on three Nashville stations uh, in early May, and it'll be played on the morning show um, on all three stations morning rotation because they want people to come to our our. Uh, city and which we're about 30 minutes, 40 minutes from Nashville, depending on how slow you drive. And 
they want them to come to this strawberry uh, strawberry festival, and it's huge. Uh, there's carnival, you know, with rides. There's all kind of activities. There's live music everywhere. There's all kind of booths set up. It's humongous deal. Uh, it's really big, and the chamber puts months of effort into this. You know, they spend their February, March, and April pretty much engaged in it. So then I had a second idea I presented to them, and they really liked it. And we're going to talk about it after the Strawberry Festival because they're too busy, and I, you know, I'm busy with other stuff too right now. But we're going to do a not a Chamber of Commerce podcast, but a a, a local area podcast where we'll talk to business owners that are local. We'll talk to we might talk to teachers, or, or we might talk to you know, churches or or whatever, but Chamber of Commerce members will have the one up to be on the guest list to come in for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And what does that do for me marketing wise? Well, guess who's hosting? I'm going to host that. We're going to do it over Zencaster, who is a fine sponsor of the VO Life podcast. Thank you. Um, We're going to do that over uh, uh, Zencaster and it's mobile and it'll just take 30 minutes, you know, and I'll work with the Chamber person who will be on the call and I'll work with whoever the guest is and we'll have some informal questions and go through some stuff. But still, again, Troy, what does that do for you? People will hear my voice on that week after week. They'll want to be on that. And then, you know, then I have the opportunity to market to them. What about your phone system? Is this a company or there's a lot of companies around here? What about your onboarding? What about your training? What about your benefits videos and things like that? I'll have that opportunity to, you know, be a, a, a an in way or inland way to talk to them and and try to get that business. There's a lot of local business out there, doctors, lawyers, uh, veterinarians, dentists. Uh, then you have all your manufacturing companies or your distribution companies or whatever they do. You know whatever you have around here. Uh, you know and. It may not be 15 things you may snag, but that's 15 things you don't have. So I think that's a great way to get out and do that. While it's slow, market, market. Uh, What else can you do locally while we're on the local thing? If there are charity events going on, you should be at those. You should go to those and hand out cards. Old-fashioned business cards. Get your link tree on the back. If you don't know what that is, look it up on Google, a link tree. They can take the picture of that and go to your website, go to your podcast, go to your Instagram, go to your TikTok, where you know you, they can go on there and it pops up a little menu and there's every little icon they can click on and go see it. That's awesome. Um, think about giveaways. We don't think about that in voiceover. Uh, ink pens, printed ink pens are cheap. And just put your wet, your name and your website on there and that's it. You know, you don't have to print all over the pen, put your name and website or just your website, you know, put voiceovers. You know, a lot of people know what voiceover is. A lot don't. But when you hand the pen to them, hey, you know, I'd love to do your phone system or whatever. Here, Here's a pen. It's got my, my website on it. Go in there and listen to my samples. Well, once you get them to the website, that's the idea, right? That's what your website is. It's your calling card. Drive people to the website. So they go to the website and they see what you can do and they may order. Uh, I don't do this because my wife detests things stuck to a vehicle. She does not like stickers on the windows or anything. Uh, If it were me, I would get my truck wrapped uh, with my voiceover stuff on it. Not because I have an ego, thank you for that email this week. It has nothing to do with ego. It's branding. You have to advertise them. And if you're branded and people see that logo, they know who it is and what you do. And that's what you're trying to do is spread that. You don't wear that logo as, as an ego thing. You wear your logo because you're branding yourself. You pass that logo around so you could put magnets on your doors when you go to the grocery store and things, when you're riding around town and somebody might see that logo and wonder, what the heck is that? And they might go look at the website just to see what it is. Drive traffic to your website, car magnets, Um, cold calling locally, walk into the doctor's offices, walk into the dentist and the veterinarians and the, the churches and anywhere you can go where you have a captive audience for 30 seconds to give them a business card with your link tree on it. It does work. It does. Um, somebody asked about newspaper ads. Nah, probably not. I think those days are, are kind of gone. Um, but if you have a local radio station, Another thing you might do, I did this 
a year ago, maybe longer, um, I donated my voice to commercials for a while, and th- they finally quit asking me to. And I don't know if it was because I sucked, or because he just hated to take it for nothing. And uh, then, but he did ask me to do a two hour a week show if I wanted to do a call in show or a talk show, or if I wanted to play music. But then I had to go in and learn their board, and I did that. But I just said, you know, that's that's not why I'm in this. I, I, that's backwards. I don't want to go into radio. I want to do what I do, you know, voiceover and et cetera. And I also believe that these podcasts can give you something. If you live in a smaller town like I do, 10, 12,000 people, do a podcast for your town if nobody's doing one and get some people behind it. And once you do and the word gets out, and if you get the Chamber of Commerce and the radio station and you uh, email out to local industries that the podcast is out there, pre-record about six episodes, uh, front load all six so they got something to listen to not just one because then they're waiting we'll maybe only put two on there in the next week two more however you want to do it but uh, lead them in and get them in and they'll start listening and you can watch your stats and see if people are actually listening and if they're not you can always circle back and say "I, i blew this it's not working but I think you'll be surprised because I think local businesses and the people will want to listen to see what everybody else is doing. And uh, they want to be a part of that. It's your small communities will come together. It's just something you can do. I'm not saying you got to do it. Um, yes, when it's slow, it's slow. Don't wallow in pity. Don't uh, change everything. Uh, make some fine tweaks and be sure you're tracking those changes. I'm not the best at that, but I try to do better here lately. I'm I'm a steno pad person, I'm, and I have said this all through my career in voiceover. I like um, the at a glance books that have all the days of the week in there. There's a dead gum bug in here, and I hear him buzzing. Um, I like that because I like it written down in front of me, and I write the notes as I go, and I put the appointments in as I make them or get them. Uh, and if I'm working on something, I can pencil in notes. I like those, and I love steno pads. I, I fill up steno pads all the time, not just because I want to refer back to it, but because if I think it and I write it down, I remember it. I do better with it. And sometimes it is to refer back to. Uh, like from VO Atlanta, there's tons of notes in this one steno pad, and I kind of dedicated it you know, to what I was doing down there. Um, and, and I'll make notes in here if, if I am doing an, a podcast interview and in, in my steno pad, if there's certain things I want to ask, you know, it's there and I've got it. Um, but write things down or use a calendar or, or whatever you got to do. Um, just don't panic when it's slow. It may be slow for other people. And then you're going, well, so-and-so he's just covered up. He got six more orders today. Well, maybe it's returning customers. They order regular. It may not be organic, you know, and maybe your your regular uh, clients are slow right now. Remember what all has been going on right here lately. It's It's been Easter, spring break. People are on vacation during spring break. Things aren't hoppity bopping as much, except for the rabbits. And that's just the way it is. So don't get despondent and don't, uh, you know, don't despair. It, it, it's very, this business is cyclical. You plan for the worst, and when things are slow, you do other things. Um, another thing you can do is take a little time for yourself. I did that today, and it really energized me. Um, and I'm still working on my daily schedule. I don't need to record, and I'm a, I am cut my grass the other day, and I'm getting hoarse. Uh, these weeds we cut uh, had something in them, and they made my eyes just pour water and burn. And now I'm getting that gravelly thing going on. So I'm going to have to watch that the next couple of days, some hot tea. But like I said, take time for yourself. Get away. Go get in the car. Go for a drive. Uh, go for a walk. Uh, exercise. Uh, I told my wife, I've got to find a basketball here that still works. My son used to play, go out here and shoot baskets all the time. And I love to shoot baskets. I'm too short to be a basketball player, but I like to go out there and shoot around. And I said, I'm just going to go out and, and shoot around for 10 or 15 minutes in the mornings. And I might just walk. We've, we're up on a hill, walk down the hill, uh, down the hilly driveway. And and our road is pretty flat. And I, I just might go back and forth from the main road to the end of our road twice, you know, and then I'll build up to three times and get out and breathe, you know, get out of your booth, get out of your house and breathe. Um, and those of you still working full time, yeah, 
you know, it's a little different. You come home and there's only a two hour window. Maybe you got to worry about, well, I don't have any orders. What am I going to do? Do something. If you're dedicated to, to doing what you're doing, do something and practice long form read, get out a magazine, pull up an article online, um, and, and just read and record yourself reading and play it back and listen to what you did. Uh, am I getting better? Am I, is my pronunciation clear? That's what I got to work on right there. Thank you for bringing that one up myself. Um, I'm finding that with YouTube stuff, you're always in a hurry to get them done and knock them out. So what I'm finding is when I audition for other things, I'm going way too fast. And I've got my sign up that tells me 50% slower, 50% quieter. Thank you, Bill DeWeese. But I don't always do it. So I'm really having to um, crack down on that. All right. This went way longer than 20 minutes. I really thought I'll be lucky to talk for 20 minutes about this, but throwing in all the other helped. But listen, hey, don't, don't, uh, don't let it get you down. It's going to be slow. It's going to be cyclical. It is what it is. And just grind on, do other things, and take care of you. You have to take care of you and go spend time with your family if it's slow. You know, maybe it's time to get out in the yard and do something with the family or load them up and go somewhere for an hour or two. Go get an ice cream at Dairy Queen, for Christ's sake. It's not that, you know, that it means the world to them sometimes, right? Um, it's, and it's not that hard to do. But don't let all this drag you down. Don't let this you know, smother you and it's just not worth it. Just like all that other that happened this week, you know, not worth it to get down over. You put your nose to the grindstone and you keep going forward. That's what you do this. Archie Bunker. Yeah, it's what you do this, eat it. You just go in there and tell the meathead, get out of the kitchen and you do it yourself this. And that's how you do it. Hey, everybody, have a good rest of the week, a good week next week. Let's all have fun. Spring is sprung. Allergies are rampant, and we're all going to sound funny for the next month. But enjoy your ride <laughs> and enjoy the VO Life. I'll see you next time. You've been listening to The VO Life with Troy Holden. Check back for more episodes each week and catch up on what you've missed also. This is for you, those just living that VO Life. Thanks for listening and join us again. The VO Life intro is by Louise Porter. The outro by Liz Moya. You can pick us up on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple, and many other podcast carriers. Need to send me an email? Do it today. Troy at TroyHoldenVoices.com. Thanks for listening.